Perfect. And since since a lot of the folks who I'm going to be sharing this with are the people who are sort of the first people involved in trying to do the Project Hyphy Langley piece and such, we can just right. do a quick, a quick introduction too, because you know in there I talk about um, you know that this is this is a, a sort of next pilot implementation of doing an unmanagement thing and like. Mm -hmm unmanagement like you know you you coined the term for that when we were trying to figure out like what is this whole thing that we're doing and so i'd love to to maybe get like a quick introduction uh of, of of who you are and what are the things that you're you're about and interested in and doing in the world oh sure yeah no i'd love to do that uh so my name is marie Biarreta. i have for a very long time been interested in how to do self-managing organizations and that has been a theme in my life since I was a senior executive at a Fortune 500 and got a chance to implement that for a little over 10 years. It's been a theme in my life in uh, raising kids, although I guess that's more like unparenting than unmanaging. <laughs> but the point is, how do you uh, raise kids in such a way that they don't lose their curiosity and they have the agency to go do what's needed instead of um, you, uh, worrying about fear and rewards to drive their decision making. And then I've also uh, spent the past decade or so uh, experimenting and writing about what it looks in like in education, both as a workplace that has uh, an intrinsically motivated workforce and students who again are have very high agency and aren't working in lockstep, but actually are working in condi conditions that are conducive to flow and to uh, creativity and to those things that are, um, those things that get shut down when you see school or work or childhood obedience as a game that you have to master so that you get told that you're good enough. And the failure to do that not only shuts down creativity, productivity, originality, teamwork, and so forth, it reduces quality of life and it actually reduces the quality of work or projects or even play that you engage in if there's any creative non road element to it, all based on self-determination theory, which was popular, popularized by Dan Pink in the book Drive. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, oh, and it's, it, it, it resonates tremendously. And I mean, it was one of the things, you know, when we were working with, with Archer and Anton and Slava and folks at Corona yeah. and trying really just kind of pioneering what this modality that looks like and figuring that out, uh, that just the level of, of, of understanding and advancement and ability to communicate around like what is all of this was one of the things that I just found so so wonderful in all of our conversations. Has been. Language is so helpful. It is. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm actually, actually I'm actually working on I'm kind of working on a framework now for um how to discuss the underlying principles metaphorically. Okay. So beyond the beyond the pattern language work, it, you know me, I'm a little bit of a dilettante. I, I get really interested in something and then I get curious about something else. Um, but what's really interesting to me is models of what our interior landscape looks like mm. and how that creates barriers to this way of functioning. Yeah. And uh, and also pragmatic ways of learning to overcome those barriers. I can't wait to hear more about the kind of the work and reflection you're doing on that. I mean, I know that again, both both at Corona Y and at Ukraine Now and any of the organizations that have done any of this kind of thing, like one of the first blocks that kind of comes up is that piece of imposter syndrome for everybody around right. like, who, who am I to be doing any of this stuff? And And the often the strange kind of carnival mirror of what everyone sees of like all the other people here are so amazing and they're doing all this extraordinary stuff and like and I'm just me who's kind of fumbling around and figuring out how to do this and do I have the time or the skills or what can I contribute with exactly 80 percent of the people are going through exactly that piece and that is exactly exactly the huge part of it is um we are taught that we're good 
if we obey, that we are shamed if we do not obey, and we are shamed if we don't, don't meet somebody else's goals, which may or may not interest us. Yeah. And taking that part out of the equation and then having tools for, uh, I, I mean, obviously that isn't something that you say the words and it's poof gone. But the, but the actual practices of recognizing when our brain is tricking us into some of those old patterns yeah. and choosing um, approaches to just walk right through those obstacles. Yeah. One of, one of the, other, the other interesting manifestations that I'm, I'm being aware of and, um, and looking at, like, yeah, what are the graceful ways of moving through this? Um, and, and maybe finding a couple is as we have, we have 12 people now who for the local, like local folks in Langley. Oh, that is so amazing. Wow. It's great. But, but from several of them, one of the key things that they ask is they're saying, look, either I don't know if I, I, I think I have to not do this because I don't have the time to commit to it. Or like, what's the time commitment in doing this? And and again, it, it's it's sort of it's it's the model of of course it looks that way because that's how we're used to working. We're used right. to saying here's your job description and here's what the expectations are of what that's going to be. Are right. you going to move up to those or not? Um, and and even just in talking to a couple of folks and saying like it would be such a gift to me if you were able to only participate in the ways that are joyful and easy and fun and match exactly what you want to do. And exactly. You refuse to do anything that doesn't do that for you. Um, because exactly. that helps so that other people know that if what you're doing is adding two posts on a Facebook group with an idea, like that's right. fantastic. Exactly. And part of what it comes down to is this living up to expectations notion. Yeah. And the idea that there are no expectations, there's only contribution. Yeah. And that every contribution is valued and appreciated, whether or not every contribution is used, right? Because who knows what shape it's going to take. But yeah. the more contributions there are, the more perspectives there are, even if it's only that one thing you pointed out we didn't see, it improves the shape of the overall project. And we're grateful. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I like you when you're talking about sort of looking at kind of the the... Uh, sort of the analogical or metaphoric underpinnings of things or how do we look at those pieces you know I've been for, for me a lot of biomimicry stuff has been coming up but the piece that in this moment so you know thinking about how how antis work or mycelial networks or about how vampire bats do their do their sharing with each other and and keep track in a loose way of what that of what that looks like in reciprocity but the thing right. that's coming right now is how much you know if there's the corporate model here which most nonprofit or charity projects run under that model Absolutely. And what, this is, what this is much more, it, it's the playground. It's a bunch of people messing around and doing a thing. They have a goal and it happens to be that we're trying to work on real world projects, but that the spirit of it is much less, would you like to apply for this job? And more like, come play. A hundred percent. And the, um, the pendulum has moved very strongly towards a hierarchical model where the person at the top needs to be omniscient and make all the decisions, yeah. which actually when you step back for a second is ridiculously stupid. Yeah. Um, the radical unmanagement doesn't even have somebody who makes decisions, right? It's a non-hierarchy. It is just a bunch of cells forming and reforming, kaleidoscopically almost. Yeah. But in order, I think, for things to work the best, you recognize that there are folks who want to hands-on build things. And there are folks who are more process-oriented and that people who are more process oriented get to serve the people who wanna build things by creating the tools, communications and structures that are useless to their creativity to spend time on, but useful to their creativity to use so they're not reinventing the wheel. It's all about uh, taking as little uh putting as little crap on everybody's plate as possible yeah 
No, I love that. I love that. And, and, and that, yeah, that process versus versus that that um, make stuff uh, orientation is such a key piece. Yeah, and so we're we're still in the the, the just beginning stages, of fumbling around and and bringing the people together to come up with what our methodology is. So we have, you know, I have some. Oh, ideas. so fun! Oh my god, exactly. so fun! Exactly. So I have I you know I have my own ideas that are coming from Corona Y and Ukraine now, and coming from uh, what we've been trying to experiment with over the last year at the Mazo. But I'm really what I can't wait for is that piece of having everybody putting their pieces into the mix and getting to see what's the different experience and, and lived experience and life trajectory and skills and those pieces that people bring. And knowing that knowing that I have no idea yet what that's going to look like and what those pieces are going to be is just isn't that amazing like opening a Christmas present and figuring out like there's something cool that's going to be there. But I don't yet know exactly what that's going to isn't be. Isn't that amazing? And that that ability to let go and trust. Yeah. It's, I think, uh, even for folks like us who have been steeped in it, it's still a leap of faith. Totally, and it's tricky. But then, well. every, but then every time it works, it's magic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be magic again. It's just not going to be magic the way we thought it would be. Ever. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, the, I love this. One of the things that's been really interesting on that side, because, you know, so much of it, I, and, and I've been thinking a lot about how it works, so, you know, you build a small group, deepen as much as you can with that group, and that continues to be an ongoing thing, but really make sure that you, that you, that you don't rush the process of trying to leap into project and really exactly. come from that place of, of, of humanity and connection first. Exactly. Um, yeah, and, and and then it's been really exciting. So you know, um, we did get a um, Human Data Commons uh, uh, gave Somalzo another Partech grant and gave us a grant to work specifically on on some of this Project Hyphy stuff. Um, wow, <laughs> it's really exciting to me that there's an increasing number of organizations that are out there that, rather than the traditional grant model of you know, show us your proposal, show us your timeline, your expected objectives, and like how you're going to reach those deliverables, are rather saying here's people who it feels like the process that they're engaging with is an interesting one that can lead to something good that we don't know what it is yet. Um, right. and, and that we have some faith, enough faith to try out to see whether that's going to go somewhere. And I feel like it's one of those little building blocks. It's sort of, it's, it's like the, the components for life coming together and life being able to exist that like the components of this new way for organizations to be are one by one clicking into place and that energy source piece is beginning to that there are more organizations that are out there that are saying like yeah I, I like the feel of what you're doing and the shape of it I see that you've done some things and I don't know exactly what will happen but but here's whatever whatever the shape or nature of the resources are that they want to, to put into the mix that is the most exciting thing and I think I think it's a little bit of a synchronicity that Tom and I are working on the mental models of how do you change your mind shift on this. I'd love to, anything around that that you want to share, I'd love to hear more about what, what you've been working on with that. I don't have anything written down yet. Yeah. Um, but once my curiosity gets aroused, I tend to get a little obsessive. <laughs> That's familiar. Oh, and Jerry's, I'll just let him in. And so I, I expect it will not be too too much longer before we will have at least a high level way of explaining the framework. Hi, Jerry. Just to let you know, we are we are recording, and the goal is to make that a public thing, just so that you're aware of that as we're getting going. And yeah, we we were we're we're right in the midst of, of awesome conversation, and I'm so excited that you're able to to join us for this. So why don't we'll 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 jump in a second to kind of an, an intro of who you are. But Marie, I'd love to, to if you want to. Continue with that, that thread that you were saying there. Yeah, let me see. I'm going to try to get my Zoom to show everybody. Mm. There we go. And in the meantime, Siri's jumping in and had an opinion too. She wasn't quite sure who was talking. She said, who is this? Was she feeling left out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I am having a trouble parsing, parsing her words. Let me see I if I recognize your voice. I don't recognize your voice. Oh, well, that's mean. That's just mean. I think she's ghosting you. That's right. You know, I kind of deserve it. I have not been giving her a lot of attention lately. It's where she's ghosting the machining you. It's it's, it's oh. 
Oh, okay, Jerry, is that scruff? I love it. Yeah, I've gone for the <laughs> scruff look. <laughs> I've gone for the scruff look. It's totally true. Uh, it's uh, it, it works for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we, we've had a little bit of an introduction to kind of who uh, Marie is. My my intention, I'm, we can share this far and wide, but part of it is going to be uh, something that's useful for the people who are just beginning to join us on the Project Hyphy Langley thing to understand what the heck is this and what's the modality of it. And one of the things that I love about getting to talk to the two of you about that as kind of a piece of our kickoff um, is that they give such a good sense of the flavor of it and that it's about bringing what excites us to the table. It isn't about formality or obligation. It's about following the energy and then just seeing where that goes. So on that note, I'd love to, Jerry, if you want to talk to, to say a little bit about, about you and kind of what you're, what you're up to. Sure, happy to. Um, I have a twisty and checkered past. I uh, was a technology trin industry trends analyst for about a decade or more, <clears throat> then uh, left and was no longer tech focused, but society focused and wound up discovering that uh, I hated the word consumer and that trust is kind of behind everything for me. So um, my amateur thesis of world history is that we somehow lost faith in humans, <clears throat> even though humans are more trustworthy than we think they are. Um, <clears throat> and so we've designed all of our institutions from a basis of mistrust of the average person, in which case we create coercive institutions with a lot of punishments and a lot of restrictions on everybody's roles, like the job description in a company, as opposed to letting people find their way to projects, which is something one could call unmanagement, perhaps. Absolutely. <clears throat> Um, and and then most recently, I, I also um, <clears throat> 25 years ago last month got addicted to a piece of software called the Brain, uh, which is a mind mapping tool. And feeding a single brain file for 25 years has taught me a whole bunch of things, um, including. Oops, sorry. Oh, interesting. Um, <clears throat> including that um, we have we have uh, no common memory, and that that's hurting us because we are drowning in the information flood. And we need a place to sort of share what we know and what we believe that might be true, but might not be true. <clears throat> and, and Wikipedia is a great place for trying to figure out what, what is sort of true because it's, it's made its way into an encyclopedia, but what about everything else? <clears throat> and so that project I call Relate, R-E-L-8, it is part of a larger community I started at the beginning of lockdown called Open Global Mind or OGM, uh, which has a bunch of standing calls anybody can join. We work very openly uh, and I'm trying to figure out what shape this little relate organization should have in order to be like a little dune buggy <clears throat> running around and doing the connective work between our different communities uh, to sort out how this shared memory might work so that we could focus on the SDGs one day and education the next and something else the next. No, I love it. And feel free, uh, no pressure to, but if you want to throw any of those links into the text, I'll make Happy sure to. that we'll in as links so that people can can reference those and see what it's about because it's it's cool stuff. Super, thank you. Yeah, so part of what we were just talking about a little bit was, you know, we're at the early stages. It was, it was, I think this last Friday that I was sort of soft launching anything. We've got currently 12 people in Langley who are uh, at this amazing um, variety and collection of different people um, uh, who are who are looking at, at participating in varying degrees and, and, and to varying extents. Um, and about that initial part of trying to do the trying to, to build group culture and that piece of enculturation of saying like, you know, this, this is that unmanagement approach. It's about what, what interests you and what intrigues you and how do you want to play and work together rather than saying, here's a job description, it's five hours a week, do you accept that or not? Um, and talking then about some of the pieces um, in, from, from Marie's work uh, of really looking at like, what are our, both what are our internal models around some of this piece and what are the obstacles that get thrown up within those internal models that, that, that hamper, or at least, well, I wouldn't even say hamper, that are part of the growth journey that is a part of doing this kind of work. Um, it's a Buddhism thing to say that the obstacles are the path. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's funny just on that, on that Buddhism note, I was thinking, Jerry, in terms of that 25 year journey of, of, of what you've been creating there, you know, I, I can imagine in a cyber variant of Buddhism and of the kind of, of dialectic and process it's done of discerning nature of self, like what a valuable process that is. And at some point, I would love to hear more about just your own reflections and, and learnings about self from having had that trajectory of doing what it is that you've been doing, because it's, it's pretty amazing. 
Thank you for asking that question, because I've done a lot of introspection about lessons I've learned from the brain. There's a thought in my brain titled that, but not the angle you just said, and it's a very lovely angle to explore, so thanks. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so we and we we talked a little bit about about um, imposter syndrome and a little bit about that feeling of maybe I don't have the time to commit, rather than a modality of whatever time I want to put in is great and is 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 all bonus. None of it is is deficit. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of a little bit of where we've been at, and and I'll I'll stop talking now and just see what what sparks and what's alive for anyone. What do you need? Mm, How can we help? So, so one of the things that is um, for for me and for Thomaso, one of the functions that this project has um, is helping us do do the concrete and do the meta at the same time. So that yes. we're trying to say, how are we doing it in this iteration in this moment? And how do we best document what that looks like? And how do we take away the learnings and best practices that can come out of that? Um, and because all of that kind of work is something that you both are really superb at. I think you know a lot of it, some of it may be ideas, some of it may be questions or cautions of like things to think about or ways to just being aware of some of some of the the either the, the pitfalls or the hidden treasures in how we might might look at any of that. And beyond that, I think it would be really interesting to just check in periodically around some of the processes or the things that feel like highlights that are coming out of it or challenges. Um, and 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 however you want to 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 dive in from any of there uh, would be interesting. I'll give an example of one piece that's been really fascinating for me. You'll see I have the the, the captioning turned on right now, and one right. of the things that I've been experimenting with is um, using the combination of Miro when when it's something where doing presentation elements is useful or collaborative pieces, mm -hmm. using Zoom to do the capture, using the captioning both as an accessibility function, but then feeding the results of that also into ChatGPT and having ChatGPT come up with a title and description for the video. Oh my word, that's and fabulous. This is, and this is going to be the first one of me also playing with having it try to do a bit of a time code breakdown so that we can have links that show here's where core topics were being discussed. And it may fail horribly, it may succeed wonderfully, but either way, I can't wait to see what the results of that are. Um, I love experiments. A thing you could automate that would be super interesting that I hadn't thought about till what you just said. Um, YouTube now lets you put uh, headings, uh, sections, names into the description. So you could ask ChatGPT to label and time and, and timestamp those different sections. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly those kind of things where where can we use those kind of tools to facilitate the grunt work that then allows us to be creative and fluid and play more easily. Yeah. And so you should talk to Pete Kaminsky, who um, has done various different things early in the pandemic. He and another guy named Bentley Davis, who are both uh, in the Monday calls that I'm on, uh, they both kind of took a whack at open sourcing uh, uh, an, a little bit of software that would strip all the URLs out of Zoom chats and then put them somewhere else in a different file so that you okay. could make it easier to cull the URLs that were talked about. Uh, and he's more interested now in, in assembling a series of tools that make it easier to do stuff. Have you also seen DocDrop from Hypothesis? No. Oh, you would like DocDrop. Um, so DocDrop is, a, is free software. <clears throat> Let me get the right URL. Um, think, think into our chat, <clears throat> docdrop.org. Um, and what happens is I, um, uh, I've installed a bookmarklet that does this automatically, but you paste a, U, a YouTube URL, it might also work for Vimeo, I don't know, into uh, docdrop, and it then goes and fetches the transcript, which YouTube has already kindly made, synchronizes it to the video, and lets you play through both, search the transcript, and click oh, back and nice. forth between the two. Perfectly free. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. And th th this is also one of the things that we're trying to do. So in our in our trying to meta the documentation, among the things we want to do is I'm making mirror boards that show here's all of the tools we're using that show for given workflows. Here's how we string those tools together to do something or other. Um, and ideally also then building a database that's just a resource uh, in Notion that's public that anybody can look at to figure out if I'm doing this sort of a thing, what are the things that would help me, you know, accelerate my process around that? So thank you. Those are, those are, it's, it's a really exciting tool. And also, like again, to, to Metapop for a second, um, I'd love to talk with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Pete uh, Kaminsky and, uh, and, and could you say his uh, colleague's name again? 
Uh, I'm typing them into the chat. Bentley Davis. Um, but that this is exactly how um, how that uh, management hyphy process works. Is it is it builds the connection and the community pieces so that these kind of conversations can happen, where it's just it's rich and juicy and flying everywhere, mm -hmm. and then and then spider out into okay, here's the next people or organizations or things we can link in, and then just yeah, keep following that energy. Very briefly to extend this. Um, I can easily see a wiki page somewhere that has a list of the kinds of utilities and things one might add to things like Zoom calls, mm -hmm. including favorite apps and stuff like that. And then separately, a list of guides or advisors or basically um, some people who have particular use cases and are just high, are just expert, and they have their their preferred suite of, of, of tools and plugins. And so you don't have to go look through anytime you start getting a list that has more than a dozen things in it. Right. It's too much work and, and it's too confusing to actually get through. So then if you can find a person who's got a strong opinion, who smells like they do what you do, you right. just pick, you just start with their core set and you're off and running. But if, I, but, I if, love that. but if we don't have our way to those little batches of recommendations, everything is harder. Yeah. And, and, and so that's one of the things that I'm also I'm trying to check. We're, I'm aiming to do everything as maximally transparent as possible. And with each person, and so like that's something I would ask for each of you is, you know, would you be willing to have your your name and maybe your LinkedIn on that list of, we have a, a whole list of people who are involved in the project. And it ranges from people who we know exist, who we think the stuff that they're doing is really cool, to people who are our inner partners working on, on a whole bunch of the stuff together. But that's, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, I'll, I'll, I'll share that out, uh, Jerry. Uh, Derek Sivers kind of started this now page thing. So I thought it was a great idea. So I've got one that, which I don't update as often as I'd like, but anyway, sorry, Marie, go ahead. No, no, that's, that's, that's all good. Uh, of course, please share me as a resource. There is, I, I've, I've gotten, now that I'm like kind of in retirement mode, I feel like, okay, I kind of finally understand the things I should have known 40 years ago. It would be sad if nobody ever used them. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that good and so any anything I could do to help was I would be absolutely delighted. Wonderful. But I think the thing that calls to me the most yeah. is I love doing the deep data collection, followed by synthesis, followed by articulation, followed by clearly putting something into a, a, a living framework. Yeah. And so in order to do that, I need to have a certain amount of firsthand involvement in the meetings, discussions, and so forth that people are doing. Um, my schedule is not terrible, but my availability is kind of specific. It's okay. like there are certain weeks that are great, and there are certain weeks that I'm traveling. Yeah. I would I would love to design around that availability and schedule some core meetings that can happen where, uh, you know, uh, for, for me, it's a delight as much as you would like to dive into those pieces. I'm, I'm ecstatic for that. But 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 it, yeah, it makes me happy if you're interested in doing that and would love to have you in, involved in those meetings. And it would be super useful to be as well. I really feel like in order for a framework to have validity, I need three examples. Yeah. And so I have the example that I myself did. I have the example that we did on Corona Y. I need at least one more example before I can, I can say, oh, yeah, this, right. I have a little bit more confidence it's generalizable. Yeah. And thank you, by the way, Jerry, for, for putting those nice little summary pieces that are in there. And, and with Project Hyphy, the plan right now is, again, Langley, we're soft launching now. Um, in May, we're going to uh, work with some of the folks at UBC to do a version at UBC um, and get something working there. Um, and we're also in conversation with folks around, uh, around a potential third location, um, which might be a different sort of approach that would be needed. So looking in a place where, um, where everything about the locale may be a little more challenging in terms of how you do things, um, but where we can use that as sort of a, a, as you're saying, having those three instances where you're able to see how does this track in different situations well. Uh, that, so sounds, that sounds fantastic. Um, are you guys on, what are your tools for communication? Are you on Slack and that yeah, kind of stuff? 
let me pull up uh, as we can we can talk about the next piece but as we do i'll pull up um the current tool chart so that i can show you what we're what we're up to on that side actually is pulling up nice and quickly so i'll just do a quick uh, screen share it'll it'll take a sec because it was in presentation sure oh that was interesting yay tech give me one second it's good it's being a little feisty Oh, let's see. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay, great. I think I think what happened there is just that the computer that I'm on, uh, I'm on my Wii computer that gets maxed out easily and gets stressed. So I'm going to use the other one to 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 share the tool piece. Um, but the other thing that I'll say as I'm loading that up is that something that would be a real gift from either of you, because so much of it is about that piece of you know, you do the building and the experimentation, you document that, you, and then you make it so that the visualizations in whatever way of what that is are visible to everybody so that it can inform group process. Right. Any of your thoughts and wisdom around, uh, around what things should we be making really sure that we're capturing or the right. right ways to be documenting some of that so that it maximizes its utility for the group? That sounds great. And also, um, any of the parallel work that I'm doing is going mm. to be a uh, creative commons attribution. Fantastic. And of course, everything we're doing is going to be that as well. We're, we're and, and we're still figuring out, I've been shooting it thinking probably MIT license is a nice way because that just lets anybody do anything with it. It um, just makes it easy. And yeah. uh, really the only thing is if people start using it, I want them to know where to go for yeah. help because this stuff, um, it's like you have to do it before you can do it. There's, yes, there, there's yeah, exactly. the, the, mind, the mindset shift is, without the mindset shift, you'll end up doing what you always did with new names. Right. And so the whole um, midwife job. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like there to be as many midwives out there as possible. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, and, and know that on that note as well, that like I am I'm always delighted to play. If there's any place where any of the stuff that we're up to is a, is of use, then 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 count me in. So the basic platforms are here. Um, so we, we have a WordPress site that we're using. Oh, then there goes the screen share. <laughs> um, I will see if I can load that back. There we go. So we have a WordPress site that's just the generic holder and sort of. Uh, okay landing place for Thomaso. We have a Facebook group that is mainly um, conversation intake and outreach so that people can onboard to other platforms. Um, we're at the early stages of having our Slack, which is where we're doing all of the, the central conversation, team formation, ideation, a lot of that's taking place there. Um, we're using Zoom for teleconferencing and recording, Google Docs for organizing, uh, documenting, we can use it for forms, and then also using Google Sites for any of the micro projects that come up so that those can have a public face that, that again, emphasizes the fact that it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be a place where people can get the information that they need in a way that's right. accessible to them. Uh, we're using Notion for the projects and team management, also for outreach in that we're making that public in terms of, of all of the different things that have to go on behind the scenes to make the project go. Mm -hmm. Miro for things like this, a mixture of de uh, design, collaboration, documentation, and as a resource. Uh, using YouTube for, our, again, documentation and, and outreach. Uh, we're using Happy Scribe to convert the closed captioning that we get from Zoom into plain text that we can then uh, edit and feed into ChatGPT. Uh, Badger we're using for uh, kudos, appreciations, and micro-credentialing, uh, and I think we'll probably also be using that as a means of figuring out, uh, you know, in the same way that sometimes an NFT might be used as a token for access to a certain level of decision-making. Oh, so interesting. That, so that we can have it so that, um, you know, the first 12 people who are in to be able to say, you know, we have a little pot of grant money that we've been given, and I want to make sure that it's democratized, but with people who are actively engaged in the process in sure. terms of how we figure out, here's how we use that pot. So those micro-credentials may also serve that function of figuring out what, what decision-making um, circles is somebody in for something like that, although again, maximally transparent. Chat GPT we're using for, I'm, I'm, I'm actually at some point, I would love to dive deep into it. I'm hoping to be writing a couple of papers on the ways that I'm experimenting with Chat GPT 
around ideation, strategy, and content, and around oh, wow. sort of a, th a three-part way of using it, where you have your descriptions for your organization, your descriptions around the potential domain of engagement, and then the specific questions that you're asking it around that. And by building up a palette of those first two things, it allows you to much more rapidly but precisely get get interesting results from chat gpt so that's that's a whole that's a whole other even topic. better it forces you to identify the exact right questions yes absolutely and so much of what you know uh, a lot of what chat gpt does is i mean the way i was describing it with a friend uh, the other day is it's it's in animation you're the key framer and what it does is it fills in a lot of the, the the little blank pieces, which you then have to go in and edit here and adjust the curve there um, and to do all of that final work. But for some of that really basic filling in, it's uh, it's an interesting chat and, and and where it goes wrong um, is is also valuable. Um, and then Night Cafe and similar tools to that for text based art generation, we're using for rapid rapid prototyping of visual assets that are needed for things. So for example, a badge system, having an image for each of those badges that we can simply pull and, and have ready to go. Uh, we're, we're experimenting with using that. So right now, those are the core uh, platforms that we're experimenting with. Uh, but that list is going gonna, is gonna, to uh, add and shift as we go. So what I would love, um, if it's OK, I'd like to be considered a team member whose job is primarily to observe and synthesize. Wonderful. But if uh, if there's opportunities to do something or say something, I won't hold back. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that, that's perfect. I would love that. And, and if you and if you give me access to the stuff that's going on and the key meetings, the ones where you, you, you kind of see how how stuff works. So I could drop in now and then. Yeah. Um, you know, I would I would absolutely love to do that. Yay, thank you. That, that, that brings me great joy to have you jumping in in that way. Yeah, um, and, and so I think it's going to be one of the things that's also an interesting piece and that I'm hoping can become a model for how we do things is, again, dropping into a concrete smaller location for doing concrete work while mm -hmm. also trying to engage with that whole global community of people who are engaged in work of this sort. And that the hope is that that then becomes something that can be, I, I mean, I, I can't remember if I, I used that metaphor with you all before, but like, it's kind of like, a, like the fascia in the body, where it's that connective right. issue that the more the body has to do a certain kind of thing, it adapts to make that something that's easier to do. And so like, I would love it if, um, you know, in the next sudden humanitarian, yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, the um, the next time that there is be it a large humanitarian crisis or something of that sort, to have an already established network of people who can simply coalesce rapidly in the right configuration to do the to do that first responder work in a way that then, as the larger, more resourced organizations move into place to do what they do. Um, you know, the, the clotting has happened and the basic initial things that need to happen are, are done in a way that can be handed over and partnered with gracefully. That's so beautiful. Yeah, and I mean, and, and, I, and I, don't, I don't lay claim to that vision. That's, you know, that's definitely a vision that has evolved from a lot of conversations with the people who are engaged in this work. And I think it's a common vision of, uh, of, of a piece of what we're working on. But that, that makes again, it more beautiful. That's one of the reasons why I think it's so delightful being able to have to, again, to talk with both of you, um, because you also are tapped into these wonderful networks of people who are engaged in this sort of thing, so that as I'm throwing out and saying, like, here's some of the specific projects we're working on, um, and the people we're working on those with, um, that as seems appropriate, there may be times where either you or folks you know might find that an interesting thing to engage with, and probably have a lot of different resources and frameworks for thinking about mm -hmm. the kinds of things that we don't mm -hmm. have. Fantastic. Um, a, a couple of thoughts. Um, one is there's a bunch of communities that are far along on some of the things that you'd like to be doing and you could probably learn a lot from. I'm forgetting the name of the uh, text emergency service that started, I think, in Kenya. But, um, you know, th there's a whole bunch of things like that that now have a lot of mileage and experience <laughs> and wisdom. Um, and so as you decide to become an emergency rapid response team, then go figure out what they what they know and 
and <clears throat> blend with them. Um, second, uh, I'm interested in participating. I'm already on too many Slacks and Discords, and um, the one that I, <laughs> the only one of those platforms that I'm actually kind of up to date on is Mattermost, <clears throat> which is an open source um, spawn of Flack, kind of. Um, and so that's where my communities are hosted, which is the reason that I'm sort of up to date on them. We also um, created a discourse, not discord community, which is a very nice thread of discussion board. My inability to go in there and to actually participate kind of kind of killed it. So we deprecated it. It was it was it was one platform too many. Yeah. <clears throat> so right now, OGM uses a Google group just for announcements. But there's a few people who post a lot of, hey, look at this article kind of things and this matter most chat. Um, so I say all that to say that I'm, I'm really interested and I think a lot of the things I'll be working on will be parallel or, or maybe even overlappy with the kinds of projects that, that you want to be doing. Um, so I want to find those. So I mostly want to encourage you to flip things in front of me in whatever channel is most comfortable for the two of us or the three of us or a small group <clears throat> so that you're like, hey, here's a little bit of like, oh, does this interest you or, or would you like to play with us over here? Because I won't be able to keep up with the, with the general stream of things. I find that I am in too many communities as it is. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we don't want to add one more fire hose to, to have to consume, but mm -hmm. I would love to. I know I'm on that one uh, matter most, um, and I would love to use that if that's the most convenient place to do it. As if, a you want, if you want to create a channel there for this project, then let's do that. It's easy. Super I love that idea, especially because everyone who's there, you know, of course, any of them would be welcome to browse in there and anything that they want to contribute would be welcome. So. Right. And I'm wondering if there's I'm a way to cross I'm familiar with all the tools, by the way. I'm just going to have to figure it all the heck out. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to cross post between Slack and Mattermost. There should be. That's a, Yeah, that's a great question. Because we could share a channel. We could say, hey, here's one channel that cross posts into both. And then if anybody wants to sort of be a bridge, just drop things and watch that one channel. No, Ideal. Um, yeah, well, and the, and the other piece there is that we are, um, because it isn't necessarily, you know, of the of the initial people who we have, a lot of them are reasonably tech savvy, some of them that that isn't what their focus is. Um, and we want to make sure that we have no tech prerequisites that prevent people who otherwise would be amazing people to have engaged from engaging. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, one of the reasons why we have the things like mm -hmm. a Facebook group, and we'll be having face-to-face -face chats and other pieces like that as a part of how we do things because I really want to be yeah to meet people where they are in terms of what communication and collaboration looks like and then figure out how do you best and this is another place where y'all may have some fantastic ideas around how we do it of how do you trickle back the core things both in and out of those non-technological environments so that what needs to get captured from those gets captured and what needs to get rel relayed in those moments is able to also get relayed well. Mm -hmm. Where are you located? Uh, it, it's in uh, Langley, British Columbia. So it's about half an hour to 45 minutes out of Vancouver. Yeah, right, got it. Yeah. I would uh, actually, if, mm. if, if, depending on what happens, I'd love to come up and meet people at some point. There's a train that's like six blocks from where I am that passes right nearby, which I could hitchhike up on at some point. So if there is ever a time <clears throat> where y'all want to do like just kind of a, a weekend jam with folks around things or anything of that sort, I would be yeah. mm -hmm. delighted I mean, to facilitate that happening. BC is a longer ride. Seattle's easy. Right. <clears throat> But, uh, but yeah, no, that would be that would be wonderful, Marie. And, and also, Jerry, I think that as, as things progress and as our community here that's working on any of the things grows, the mm -hmm. possibility of us having a contingent of folks that like hop down to Seattle and where we, we you know, we can converge in somewhere that's convenient to-, to That too, to. for sure. Yeah. Very wonderful. True. Yeah, and I think I think the part that is the, so we have a couple of projects that have just been at the very beginning, because, you know, again, so much of it is process related. Um, but you need you need some kind of a lightning strike within that high voltage environment for things to actually happen. Um, right. So the first one was an interesting one for me. It was in talking with one of my son's teachers, actually with a couple of them, around um, him being very keen around gameful design and like game design and video games is something he loves and has a really good mm -hmm. idea of how you make things fun. Um, right. Also. Um, definitely has one of those pieces where if there's something that is interesting and then it has like the stamp of taint of this is schoolwork put upon it, all of a sudden it's like, this is not a fun thing anymore. And so, right? and so we're working on, uh, I thought one thing that would be fun is again, first, first pass designing 
um, a, a badge system that is based on just some core elements, not around like a gold sticker, you've done this assignment, but that is more around um, like, you've been like, here's the ways you've been engaging with organization or with research or with yes, other that. components of like the inner parts of that. Um, and realizing, I think that'll be handy for my boys, but also then making that a public resource. So we now have a Thomaso has an official 10 badge set of K to 12 motivational badges that we can just experiment with and let people know that it exists and see if it goes anywhere. But just as like a first throw something in and see what happens. And speaking of motivation, I wrote like this 10 page guide for teachers on how to foster intrinsic motivation. I would love to see that. I would dearly love it if I can get a copy of that. I would love to give you a copy of that. Mm. The official one I sent to somebody to do to make it all fancy and pretty and they fucked it up. Oh, um, no. oh. So I will I will connect you with the raw text. Have, okay. you, post, have you posted it online any place? Uh, it's, uh, yes, actually, it is posted online in ugly ways. Um, ugly and readable, I, okay. Yeah, but what I'm going to, what I'll do after mm. this mm. is I will send you guys a link to the uh, Google Doc, which is that sounds wonderful. so much easier to read. Yeah, and, and, and anywhere if you're wanting, like both, I'm delighted to have that as a resource, but if that's something, uh, it sounds like a thing you have both put a bunch of thought into is an area of your expertise and that the world desperately needs. So I, I am happy mm -hmm. to boost signal around that. And if we're able to list that as one of the resources. Absolutely, same thing, same thing, same thing, attribution only. Yay. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited for that because that's the other one of the things when we're talking about badges and talking about any of those things of really wanting to underscore that part that it's never about trying to use dark patterns of external motivation and is about how do you underscore, augment and celebrate and set milestones around intrinsic motivation. And um, not only, so it turns out there's actually five levels of motivation. Okay. And so intrinsic isn't always going to be appropriate. So you know when you're gaming and you're like grinding for rep? Right, right. Okay, that is like one level down. It's still a very high quality of motivation, but it is not intrinsic. You're not doing it because you enjoy the task. Right, right, yeah. No, I, I love that. No, I, and is, is that in there? Because again, like, I'd love that. I'm, I'm it, it isn't, that. but I have, uh, I've done some workshops on, on this stuff. I'd be happy to send you the uh, um, slides. I would love that. Also, one of the things that I'll put forward is that one of the things that I'm keen on with this whole project is looking at um, for each person, because I mean, again, it's, it's <clears throat> very, before you had arrived, we were talking about that part, but it really is about first coming from the human and coming from the connection side, and then everything emerges from that. Um, mm -hmm. And so part of what I'm trying to understand for each person who's involved in any kind of a way of, of like, what in their ideal do they get out of participating other than simply a, a place to play, a fun sandbox with interesting people, uh, mm -hmm. which itself is, you know, mm -hmm. enough motivation. But for things like that, especially when we're engaging people in their professional capacities, um, figuring out where are the places where people want to volunteer that, where are the places where people want to say, here's a thing that costs X amount of money that I would be happy to do so that we can say, okay, here's the places where, where we collectively can decide, let's allocate some money to doing that. Because um, I really want to make sure that we also, um, that everybody knows the degree of value that's placed on their participation. So I just wanted to say that, that I'd love mm -hmm. those notes from a workshop. And any things like that, that as we continue, that you say, I think your group could get benefit from such and such, but that's the thing Absolutely. I do professionally. Let me know. And that's great. And also, I would be more than delighted to do workshops if that anybody needs them at some point, assuming that... Um, uh, I, the, the travel is not super expensive. <laughs> do you have a tagline or an elevator pitch for the project right now? How do you how do you explain it to a complete newbie? Not a good one. The, the way that I explain it to a complete newbie is um, that at the core, again, it's about when when people with without all of the trappings, like we're using a bunch of technology, there's all of these different people's pieces that are there. But if you pair all of that away, it's about people connecting and having, we each have our own based off of our, our backgrounds and experience and knowledge, our own understandings of what are the needs and what are the visions for how things could be within a community. Um, and that when we come together um, in exactly the way that we choose to, 
um, to share those insights and to then work together creatively to come up with, well, what do we do with that? What, what could we create? What do we build that, um, that it seems like good ideas and interesting projects and, and the, the required resources to make them happen happens and that if we can do that in a way where we document all of that, the successes, the failures, all of the warts of how you do anything like that, that then becomes a resource for the world where anybody who's wanting to do this kind of work can help us do it better and can benefit from anything that we're doing. So you've just described open space meetings and Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know how what you're doing is different from those or builds on those. Thanks. So, so I'll say that the, the core pulse of the work that allows for all of that to happen is looking at how do we do practical on the ground projects, um, starting with things that are bite size and that fit typically within the framework of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So as we work with people on figuring out what the projects are, um, the goal is to do things that we can see an appreciable movement of the needle here in Langley as a starting point um, of, of it actually doing something, uh, doing something effective, doing something that people are, are able to measurably benefit from here. Mm -hmm. I just typed in hypothetically in the chat, are you a self-organizing community of practice focused on the SDGs? I love that. I think that's a wonderful summary. And that the other, another key piece of that is that it's, um, I'm trying to think how to, how, how to best put that part, because, you know, we're looking at the inner development goals and those pieces as well, and that a core piece of it is it isn't simply about service. It's also about the about building strong community and that that starts with the people who are participating and to understand that for everyone who's participating, we value their needs and we value their trajectory and that we want to work together to build as many layers of win-win as possible and to come up with what that looks like. And so for some people that might be, here's an opportunity to lead a workshop on a thing. And for other people, it might be for me to be able to participate in any of this, I desperately need to figure out the organization of my office and like what whatever the pieces are that fully allow people to work yeah to work joyfully in their life maximizes their ability to work on the project as well and so so that mixture of inner work emerging community uh, emerging community of practice work um and then work on the concrete projects are all are all parts of the goal marie does that jive with what you're thinking sorry what's that does that jive with what you were thinking me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for, for me, it's not the what, it's the how. It's yeah. like, I, th I, feel, I feel like the whole world needs a new way of engaging and that our biology tends to prevent us from being able to do that. Mm. But that that is not necessary. We all have beautiful reprogrammable brains and we can program them to serve us better. Yeah. And that piece that I think is so key is that when I look at my map of the world and what needs to happen and what can be done and how to do any of it, that the places that are here be dragons for me aren't for other people. And that the more we share those different maps, the more we're able to, with greater yes. ease, make things happen that are interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that's, that pops to mind as, as we were talking about that piece of, of the, the kind of the inner and the professional work as well is so this is a puzzle that I'm working on, is figuring out how to best, and it may simply be having the possible definitions and having people say in a given moment where they're at on a scale and having that something other people can see. But the it's the degree of, on the one hand, like I'm totally new to this and what I want is somebody who will teach me how to do these mm -hmm. things and give me concrete opportunities to work on things to something that is more of a, you know, I'm looking for, for some kind of, whether it's a mentorship or a coaching and how do you move into this thing to the, like, I'm just here as a peer diving in, wanting to work on all of the things and feel comfortable enough with what that looks like that I'll, I'll fumble my way towards figuring out what, what that is. So, so making it, and, and also having that piece of like, I'm more than happy to share Here's the pieces that I feel I have a particular ability to help other people with. And again, just be able to have all of that mapped out so that on the one hand, and again, I think of things like Corona Y where often what would happen is someone will dive in and what they're diving into is this seething chaos of things going on. And right. 
I don't even know where to plug into any of this, let alone what it is that I would do there. And so making it as easy as possible for folks to identify for each other, this is somebody who like, they're just checking things out and they'll figure out where they wanna jump in. Or here's a person who maybe I'll say, hey, what are you up to? Tell me a bit about yourself. You might wanna go talk to so-and-so because they have some similar interests. I'm kind of feeling joyful. Yay. Yay. Yeah, and me, me as well. This is this is so wonderful. And I'll, I'll, I'll mark- So, this, so this, this first project, Daniel, is there like a uh, prescribed output? Um, I'll say that right now, uh, as a first pass, um, I simply made, uh, and again, I, I monkeyed with chat GPT in terms of defining what some of the pieces would be. And I simply came up with, and I'll, I'll share the, uh, the link to y'all and I'll put it onto the, the Zoom as well. Uh, I can't do it on this computer though, um, but for the, like, <laughs> the initial 10 badges, um, uh, but, but there isn't, absolutely. It's a wide open thing. And it's meant to also be a starting point for experimenting with like, okay, well, if we do that and it works kind of well here, what might other things look like that would have you know variations on a theme? So it's wide open for play. So I, I think we're more or less on the same page with all the meta. Uh, I think I need to get in the slacks or whatever to be able to ground that yeah. better yeah. and then bring it back up to the meta. That makes all kinds of sense. I can share the links to what we have so far. The slack Perfect. is right empty because I'm, I'm hoping by end of day today to have the onboarding doc done and have people actually onboarding into it. I um, think I'll wait for the onboarding doc. Perfect. That sounds great. And then I'll, then I'll, then I'll test run the onboarding. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'll, I'll mention quickly the other the other nascent project is one that I'm just like there's a there's a glimmer of something here that I think is useful for my own process for the project. I've taken there's about 250 nonprofits and charities that operate out of Langley, mm -hmm. um, and so simply databasing that, taking you know all of the ones which are which are non-religious and non-partisan, um, right. And, and, and filtering down and then putting all of those just into a database and the, so that I can then look at that and say which of these might be ones that we might want to to engage or have conversation with but also I had a friend who ran for Kamloops just a, a database for the community um, so that people could say I have this kind of a need and can very quickly find any of the different resources in the community that might be able to help meet whatever that need is and so right. turning that work that we have to do for the project anyway into a useful public resource so that if well, someone yeah. has a need, they can just access it and say, oh, okay, here's the different organizations I should talk to. Fabulous. Um, so, for, so he's got a project he's been working on for several years now called Catalyst, uh, has, has gone through a couple other names as well, which is a big database of organizations, which is, for, and he's really nice to work with, young fellow. And then I'm trying to remember his name, goodness gracious. Uh, Robert, Bob, something or other, but he's got a pretty large project and has been mapping organizations and people in Kumu okay. um, and has a very deep uh, map that actually works really beautifully. So you could maybe save a lot of time by piggybacking on either of their efforts. Absolutely. That that sounds wonderful and 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 is exactly the kind of thing I'd love to do. So yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can... I can um, I'll, I'll contact uh, Vincent Arena and, and see if that's something where we can where, yeah, we can use his system and, and kind of put anything into there and then just make people aware of that as a resource. That's fantastic. And Kumu, I would say Vincent for sure is on the Mattermost uh, and the mailing list. Um, I have to find the other name because he's got a lot of resources as well. Great. And yeah, and, and I'm recognizing we're kind of, we're at the hour mark and I, I so appreciate you both taking the time to do this. And I wanna make sure that we, you know, we, we do it in a, in a bite-sized enough way that we can keep the energy for our next <laughs> session as well. Um, but yeah, just just a lot of energy and excitement uh, and joy and gratitude for, for the way that you both show up and all of the amazing stuff that you bring. So thank you. Same here, ditto. Likewise. Really appreciate you. Thank Enjoy you. Your Sunday. All right, so send me stuff. I will. Stuff, stuff. You know. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. guys.